We good? All right. Well, first of all, thank you, everyone. Um, quick show of hands. Who is already familiar with Citrix product in some way, shape, or form? Okay. Yeah. Of course, these guys up front. So th this is my peanut gallery right here. Um, so, th okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Now, what I wanted to do is talk very briefly about the evolving role of IT today um, and how that really fits into both Citrix and OpenStack today. And we're gonna highlight integrations into three of our products today. We're gonna tell you about exactly which projects we're integrating in and in what ways and show you some, some demonstrations as well. So first up, we're gonna have Zen Server. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Zen Server, our hypervisor, excuse me, our hypervisor. And then we're actually gonna do a demonstration uh, of something we actually have new here called Zen Server Core. And we're gonna introduce that. Um, next, uh, Shudar is, uh, raise your hand, man, say hey. <laughs> Sridhar is going to take us through uh, Netscaler as well. So load balancing as a service with our, our Netscalers and, and integration into Neutron. And also the Netscaler control center software. And finally, I'm going to close it out with Cloud Portal Business Manager and uh, what we call a connector and how Cloud Portal really allows us to do uh, multiple workloads and, and multiple clouds in the background as well. Now, Think about this for a second. Traditional IT, and I, you know, I come from a data center background, data center operations for you know, probably six, seven years at, at IBM actually. And doing a lot of this over here, this very traditional workloads where building the servers, putting them in, getting the networking going, the storage, getting everything working, very traditional applications as well. Well, what is going on is there's a need for cloud in a lot of organizations. Could be private cloud could be public cloud, or there's this kind of thing in the middle we're calling hybrid cloud as well. So really, where do you go? It really honestly depends on the workload. Where, what kind of workload you want is, is oftentimes the placement. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're building everything like you did in the old days. What we're really doing is evolving into where IT operations going forward is going to be both a provider as well as a broker to a lot of these services, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. Now, how does Citrix and OpenStack fit together in a data center and, and providing these workloads? Well, if you look at the bottom of this, this is really your physical layer. So networking, compute, storage. Netscaler from Citrix is a physical hardware component, but at the same time, there's network services above it. So load balancing, firewalls, VPN, things like that. Netscaler covers this area as well. And then you, of course, have the virtualization layer, your hypervisor layer. Well, this is Citrix Zen server for here. And then OpenStack for the orchestration layer. And then lastly, on top of that, how do you provide these services and workloads out to the organization? Well, that is through a product called Cloud Portal Business Manager. We're, we're gonna demonstrate at the end today. And this is really, again, providing workloads to all of the layers in your organization. Now, I just kind of threw this up here quickly. These are all of the projects currently that are official in OpenStack. And if I take those products that I mentioned earlier, first of all, Zen Server Hypervisor. And can everyone kind of read that from the back? Is that okay? I know the print's a little small. So Zen Server Hypervisor plugging into Cinder, Nova, Swift, Glance, and Neutron. Netscaler load balancing as a service, plugs into Neutron. And then lastly, this Cloud Portal. Cloud Portal sits on top, and we're plugging into Horizon, Nova, Cinder, and Ciliometer today with heat coming in the near future. Now, let's dig into each of those products in a little more depth. So, a little bit about Zen Server. So, very mature hypervisor out in the market today. Over one million downloads of Zen Server, the free version. Over 300,000 customers, and offered in over 50% of Fortune 500 organizations, empowering some of the world's largest public clouds. So, it's been around. It's been around for quite a while. And what's really nice about this is earlier this year, Zen Server was always 
portions of it were always open source. Well, we actually took it and created what we call the Zen Project. The Zen Project was with the Linux Foundation. The Linux Foundation, what we actually did is we took a lot of the, the code and we offered it over to the Linux Foundation so that it can be really organized and maintained going forward in a true open source way where it is a community-led distribution. So a lot of the service providers are actually contributing back and helping us maintain Zen now as well as uh, a lot of very large organizations um, that are all listed up there. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, before we open sourced it, there actually was other parts of, of Zen that were open. It's kind of weird, but it was open but not fully open, right? So what happens here is HA, or high availability, the Zen Center, the management, and the Windows PV drivers, this one in particular, was where a lot of folks were wondering why we were kind of keeping those bits to ourselves. Because that is kind of a key integration point for a lot of organizations. Yes, sir. Oh, para virtualization. And so up here, we again, proprietary, we kind of kept this to ourselves. Well, when we did the announcement to the Linux Foundation, we took all of those and made everything open source. So now Zen, Server, Zen Center is open source. The PV drivers are open source. The high availability is open source. But let's talk a little bit about behind the scenes what's going on here. If you notice from this slide, the previous slide, to this slide, this packaging stayed exactly the same. The reason why that packaging stayed exactly the same is because we opened everything up, but we wanted to kind of get it out there, and we offered that Zen Server ISO that, that bootable CD, that installation experience. And we want it to be able to continue to offer that to our customers. Now, what are we going to be doing going forward? Well, in the future, we're actually changing this distribution over here. Everything is still open and available. But what we're doing is we're actually changing everything to really offer the back end, the way it actually Zen Server is built, is actually built with layers now so that it's not just one big blob like it was on the previous one. It's now packages based. And one of the great reasons to actually do that is because it allows the community, again, all of those sponsors that were in the Linux Foundation or on that earlier slide, it allows them to more easily digest this, develop it, and contribute back and, and keep the project very healthy. Now, when we do something like that, we get things like this. So we're going to do an introduction here of what we call Zen Server Core. So what is Zen Server Core? Think of it as a development snapshot. So we're taking the way we built everything in the background, and going forward, we're allowed, we can actually replace some of these underlying bits. You notice this isn't Zen Server anymore. This is actually your Linux distribution. So you can now load Zen Server on top of Ubuntu. You can load Zen Server on top of CentOS. So you can actually take an existing Linux distribution, kind of do app get Zen Server, and turn a Linux distribution into Zen Server so that you can do the virtualization on top of it. Now, one thing though, this is still kind of a development test kind of process. So you know, we wouldn't recommend this for production today. So with that, we actually have a demonstration of it. So Ewan's gonna come up here. I'm gonna flip to the video very quickly here, and, and what we're gonna actually show you is a little bit of Zen Server Core actually working. So, go ahead. I seem to flip, so hold on one second. Which video was it? I think this one. Where is full screen? There it is. You just wanna hit play? You gonna do it? All right, you drive. Uh, hi, so yes, I'm Ewan, I'm one of the engineers who's been working on, on Zen Server Core, and what I'm gonna show you is basically how we anticipate Zen Server Core being useful to people. Zen Server Core is a dev snapshot of what we're currently working on in, in Zen Server that you can easily deploy on 
a Linux machine you already happen to have lying around. You don't have to dedicate a machine to it. And what we're going to see here is just a Zen Server Core, a dev snapshot running under DevStack, which is the dev snapshot of OpenStack. So to start with, what we have here is actually our, is this Zen Center, uh, our Windows-based uh, management application. And you can see we have two hypervisors. Um, they are both marked as being Zen Server Core. Um, and uh, if we just have a look on those hypervisors, um, SSH to one of those, what you'll see is um, that this machine actually started off life as an Ubuntu uh, 1310. Um, it was a completely standard Ubuntu installation. Uh, we added uh, a, a pointer to our um, package. Yeah, it's, it doesn't come out so well on this, but basically that's just catting, et cetera, release. Uh, you can also see that the message of the day said, uh, this is Ubuntu 13.10. We, we installed Ubuntu from the CD, added you know, a tiny bit of configuration to point it at our um, uh, package repository. We then did apt-get install Zen Server Core. It installed all these packages. There's a, a wizard at the end that sets things up. You reboot and you're running something which looks very much like Zen Server. Um, Zen Center talks to it very happily, and uh, as we'll see in a minute, OpenStack also talks to it in exactly the same way that it talks to, to Zen, Ser uh, Zen Server, um, the ISO packaged product. So, yep, that's just the Ubuntu being highlighted. Uh, if we check out the other guy, uh, it turns out that he started off life as a CentOS. Um, so, uh, we have two different underlying base distributions, but when we layer the packages of Zen Server Core on top of them, they both look like Zen Server to the, to, from the point of view of the management tools. Um, so that's just highlighting that's probably a bit easier to see. Come on. Okay. Um, so let's bring out, uh, let's just expand that a little bit. So what you'll see now is that as I said, we have DevStack installed on these hypervisors. Um, there are two DevStack OS DOM U virtual machines. So uh, on Zen, DevStack runs in its own virtual machine um, with all the, the, the tooling packaged, packaged there. Uh, one of the things that we are working on with uh, Zen Server Core is the ability to move the DevStack stuff into DOM0, which is the management domain. Um, but uh, in this demo, we had it in, in its own domain. Uh, as you also saw there before the window came in, there's another um, instance there, which is the DevStack managed instance, this demo instance. Um, and slightly giving the game away, it was ju just a moment ago there in the state migrating. So what that, that VM is, it's just a, a completely st um, standard Ubuntu. Uh, it's this instance 01 that you can see up at the top uh, underneath the highlighted in uh, image. And it's migrating back and forth between, uh, between those two um, machines and it's put, it's uh, um, streaming some video back uh, and this is just uh, heading into the in, into uh, the management dom u uh, we'll see the command line uh, just to show that um, that vm as you can see again it's migrating there's just a, an infinite loop that's every it leaving it 10 seconds on one machine and then moving it over to the other one um, i'm going to skip ahead a little bit if i can and yeah, so what you'll see now is um, there's a video playing up in the top corner, uh, which is telling you a little bit about the history of, of Zen, the Zen project, the open source hypervisor, and this instance which uh, is playing it back is moving back and forward between those two, um, two, instance, two hypervisors as it's playing the video without any, um, without any drop of packets. And this is actually a, a, a live migration of the VM with block storage live migration as well. So there's no shared storage between these two hypervisors. Um, when the VM is moved, uh, the, the underlying disk image is copied from one hypervisor to the other, and then deltas are sent in the same way that, that memory migration does. And then finally, you, uh, you flip over. Um, so yeah, the, the key points to take away from this are both of these machines, these hypervisors started out life as completely stock installations from their respective ISOs. Um, we installed the Zappy tool stack and the, the Zen Server core packages on top of that. We got something which interoperates with anything that currently talks to Zen Server, so both our own uh, Windows-based tool and OpenStack. Uh, and then the, the final thing that we, we've seen there is, this, is the live migration between two different flavors of, of Linux. And that's, uh, that's cool. that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Neil.
right. So let me just flip back here. Here we go. So again, the, the screen might have been a little hard to see, so I just want to highlight exactly what we demonstrated there. So we had two different underlying Linux distributions, both of them running Zen Server Core. Then we did a live migration from one to the other and back again. And then we want to point out that really at the end of the day, both OpenStack and Zen, Zen Center, excuse me, communicate using Zappy or the Zen API as well. So what does that mean to you? What kind of value does that bring to your organization? Well, again, Zen Server today is our production quality hypervisor. Zen Server Core is really designed, again, development and test kind of environments get up and running. And then lastly, at the bottom here, we did core to core today. This ability to migrate bi-directionally between Zen Server and Zen Server Core is some, something that will be coming in the future as well. And with that, I'm actually gonna turn it over to Sridhar here to talk about Netscaler. There we go. Okay. So, um, how many folks here are familiar with Netscalers have, or have they used them in the past? Have heard of them? Okay, good. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, Netscaler is a, is a market leader in the application delivery controller market. Um, what does it do? It, uh, it does many things, out of which, um, out of which the, the, the most salient features are really 100% um, availability of applications through world-class world load balancing capabilities. Um, high degree of performance through uh, advanced features like caching and compression. Uh, offload capabilities such as SSL offload and TCP multiplexing to reduce the load on the backend servers. And end-to-end uh, -end security capabilities including a industry-leading web application firewall and a uh, industry-leading access gateway function and many other DDoS kind of protections. So that's the class of services that this killer offers. And how does it relate to a cloud environment? So if you, look at, if you look at what are the topmost criteria for a cloud provider, be it a service, be it a cloud, public cloud provider or a private cloud provider, um, the first one is really how do I increase performance of my applications and services on demand as and when they need it. The second is how do I reduce the number of appliances and bring in simplicity uh, in, through multi-tenancy and consolidation. Third is how do I expand um, capacity seamlessly uh, on demand and the fourth is, as I deploy new services, how can I deploy them with agility and speed, right? Now let's look at how, these are, how all these criteria are addressed by innovations in, within the NetScaler platform. So we'll talk a little bit about what we call the Triscale technology. It's actually a, a core message which is built upon uh, three dimensions of innovations um, driven through NetScaler. The first one in, in, in these three dimensions is actually a scale up is what we call that. It's actually a pay grow capability within built into each of our hardware platforms. It provides elasticity for unlocking new capacity on demand as and when there's the need for new capacity. We do that by applying new licenses on existing hardware so that you don't have to invest in new hardware footprint to unlock additional capacity. Um, so it gives you investment protection. All our, app, all our platforms actually support Triscale and our mid-range, just to give you an example, our mid-range platform can scale up all the way from 8 Gbps all the way up to 42 Gbps. That's like a five times increase just by unlocking additional capacity through, through licensing. Um, the second one is really how do I gain simplicity through consolidation and uh, multi-tenancy? Um, what's most important there is as, 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 the, as the application footprint in a data center actually increases, the number of applications and the density of applications in a data center as it goes up, it's important for the provider to actually think about a, a sprawl in appliances which are often underutilized and how do you gain, how do you, how do you reduce operational simplicity by consolidating your appliances and, and bringing in multi-tenancy into a single appliance. That's, that's what the Netscaler SDX is purpose built for. Um, it achieves simplicity by, by consolidating appliances without sacrificing performance or isolation. And we'll see how we do it. 
uh, first thing that, that we did to achieve that goal was to actually um, make our appliance available as a virtual appliance. So uh, with our, our software appliance, which is called the Netscaler VPX, has the exact same binary and the exact same software footprint as our um, hardware appliance, which is the MPX. It's got the same build, it has the same features. It's available on AWS. It's, it's, uh, it's, it supports all the hypervisors, including Zen, Hyper-V, KVM, and VMware. Um, so now you virtualize the appliance, but then what does the virtual appliance run on? Of course, you have the option of running it on, on generic hardware. That's x86 running standard hypervisors. But we also have a purpose-built multi-tenant platform, which is the SDX, which is purpose-built for guaranteeing performance without sacrificing isolation. Um, so we've done many investments in different technologies to make this possible on the SDX. So it's got, you can, it's got complete hard walling of CPU, memory, and SSL uh, capabilities, which are hardware resources that can be allocated to each instance. It's got complete independent entity spaces with their own networking stack and operating system for each individual instances. Um, it's got complete independence in maintaining and, and, and versioning and things along those lines for administrative independence across different tenants within an organization. Um, and in, in addition to being a platform to host Netscaler uh, appliances, it also has been exposed, it's, it's, op it's been opened up, the platform has been opened up to provide uh, a home for third party services, including security services and, uh, and IPAM services and uh, DNS services. And we work with some of the uh, industry leaders like Palo Alto Networks, WebSense, and Blue Cat, um, where they can run their virtual appliances on the STX platform and without sacrificing performance and isolation, you get the benefits of consolidation. So how does this all relate to um, SDN is something that we'll cover in a second. But I want to complete the third axis along price scale, which is around expandability. Uh, expandability is all around how do I horizontally scale as and when I need more capacity uh, for, for my ADC needs. So we accomplish that through our clustering technology. Essentially, you can take 32, up to 32 different nodes of Netscalers and manage them as one single entity. So, and it's a completely distributed architecture. All the state and persistence that you need, all the context that you need for your applications to run seamlessly um, is, is shared within the cluster, and the cluster appears as a single node to any external entity. And it provides complete M plus N redundancy, because even if one half of your cluster actually breaks down, the other half can take up the load um, corresponding to, that, to, to the last half, basically. Uh, and our clustering is actually available on all our platforms, including the VPX, MPX, and SDX. So in fact, you can take different instances on the SDX platform, which is itself a multi-tenant platform, and achieve clustering not just across multiple instances on the SDX, but across multiple SDX devices. So you have clustering on two dimensions, basically. Um, so. So these, this is pretty much the summary of Triscale, and Triscale actually lays the foundation for software-defined networking, and, and why is that? If you look at where today's conversations around SDN lie, they're mostly around dynamic procurement and provisioning of networks and network services. So network services that can actually scale up and scale in and scale out on demand form the underpinnings of a true software-defined services model, right? Um, Now, what is Netscaler's vision, and what is Netscaler's role in SDN environments? So as we, as we look at sort of where SDN conversations are today, there are the applications. And then from a network standpoint, you have the programmable elements, which are today the physical switches and the virtual switches. And you have some sort of a centralized controller controlling these, these, these network elements programmatically. You have controllers from many different vendors. Um, and Today, a lot of the conversations are focused on providing connectivity uh, at the underlying layer so that tenants in the networks can actually procure connectivity, they satisfy their connectivity needs through a self-service procurement model. That's, where, that's what SDN has done today through paradigms such as network virtualization. And that's where things stand today. However, in the network, you also have a, you also have a whole slew of network services, which we call the layer 4 through 7 services, that include firewall services, IPS IDS services, IPAM services, um, visibility services, and of course, application delivery controller services. Now, these services need centralized control also, um, where essentially you have an application control layer that can, that can dynamically program provision all the network services in a seamless fashion, and in turn can integrate with the orchestration engine so that you have a single pane of glass for all your layer 4 through 7 services. If you think about it, 
So what does SDX give you? We just talked about SDX, and what SDX gives you is a home that you can actually run your services on without sacrificing isolation and, and performance needs, right? But you also need a way to program and procure and lay down policies across all these services without having to worry about uh, implementation details on what service should be installed where and what kind of policies should be applied on which, which devices. So the user needs to be able to express his policy needs in a very abstract fashion, right? Um, and, and the application control layer is the one that's translating the policies expressed by the user into something that's more meaningful to implementation specifics around each of the service nodes, basically. So, um, and that's where we see ourselves as, as Netscaler, Citrix, we see ourselves playing a huge role there where we interact with the application um, we understand the needs of the application as expressed in terms of policies. We, we, we program the network layer for, for communicating the networking needs of these services and then deliver sort of a truly orchestrated layer two through seven network. So that's, that's Citrix's vision um, in SDN. Now, and what are the innovations we've done in that space? One is, one is SDX, as we already spoke about. That gives you a data plane element that is completely isolated and high performance, right? And it's been opened up for running multiple third-party workloads. Um, the other thing that you need to do there is really provide a seamless, um, seamless programming approach to actually programming policies in these services. That's where the Netscaler Control Center comes into play. So Netscaler Control Center is a single point of control for programming um, different network services on a wide variety of uh, platforms. Today, what it does is it, it, it applies Netscaler ADC services across all the Netscaler platforms, including MPX, VPX, and SDX. And it has adapters that actually allow it to integrate into different orchestration platforms. So it forms a single pane of glass for visibility. It forms a single point of control for actually configuring services without being agnostic of which without completely agnostic of uh, which hardware resources are being consumed for the services the tenant is consuming, basically. That's completely managed by the control center. Um, it, it by itself is a, it's a multi-tenant management platform, and it can be natively accessed to, to provide additional functionality that today some of the cloud providers may not provide. So what are we demonstrating today? We're demonstrating a way to enable load balancing as a service through control center, and it's being deployed in a, uh, on, the, on the Netscaler platforms, which include both SDX and VPX. So we'll, we'll demonstrate two kinds of tenants. Uh, one is a bronze tenant, and the other is a gold tenant. So the gold tenant gets an SDX instance, just as a way for the administrator to differentiate classes of services between different tiers of tenants. And the bronze tenant gets an individual VPX instance, which is running on a regular hypervisor. And the control center is the orchestrating instrument for provisioning these services on the appropriate instances. So we'll start, with, we'll start with the administrator and illustrate the workflow of the administrator. The first thing that the administrator does is he'll add a set of devices to be managed by the control center. It's as though he's registering different kinds of platforms to control center, as aggregate capacity to be managed by control center. In this case, we're showing you an example of uh, an SDX device being added to the pool of devices to be managed by control center. So that's the first step. So you see, that, you see that all these fleet of products have been added, but they've not been associated with any tenant yet. Um, now we're actually, now we go back to the tenant workflow, and the tenant is actually logging in through the OpenStack Horizon dashboard. This is the OpenStack Horizon portal. Um, and he's about to consume load balancing as a service. So the first thing he would do is, this is a standard, anybody who's familiar with load balancing would know the standard workflow for load balancing. The first thing he would do is to add a pool. A pool is just a representation for the set of servers to be managed by the load balancer. Um, so there's a name, there's a description. Uh, you associate a subnet, which you would have created using sort of the Neutron APIs uh, prior to coming to this workflow. So there's the subnet. Um, and then you select a protocol. And then you select a load balancing method, standard round robin least connections, things along those lines. So after, after the tenant has added the pool, the next step is to actually populate the members of the pool. What are the set of servers that you want to load balance? It's standard affair. Um, and the members, the list of members that would actually show up are really the VMs that have been launched in that network. So 
there you go, he added pools and he associates weights with the members and specifies the protocol. That's been added. And the last step now is really to finish the configuration is to um, front end the pool of servers with the virtual IP. So that's, it's a single IP that is accessed to access a given service, right? There are additional functions such as session persistence that would allow a given client to always persist to the same server. That's also supported. It's not part of the demo. So that completes the configuration of the load balancer itself. And if you go back to the control center, you would actually, if you, once the refresh screen is hit, you would actually see that now this, this particular NetScaler instance has been associated with the gold tenant on the fly by control center. So it's actually associating different instances with um, different tenants, basically. Um, now we go to the SDX console just to see what kind of hardware resources have been allocated for that tenant. So if you see, if you see the instance, if you see the, there's a total memory, that's, that's a hard allocation that, that's been set up by the provider. Uh, a certain number of SSL chips have been set up by the provider. The CPU has been set up as a shared CPU. And so that's, that's the hard walling that we spoke about for, SS, uh, for SDX. And the final thing is to actually see the uh, load balancing work. Um, so it's the, it's the virtual IP that's being accessed and they're being served from two different servers on the back end. Um, now, okay, now you've deployed the load balancer. What's left is really to see what are the operational characteristics of the load balancer that you just deployed. So NetScaler Control Center is a visibility tool also. So it'll let you see the status in the and the performance characteristics of the services deployed. So now it's the tenant logging in into the control center, and here's where he sees sort of performance characteristics and statistics for like packets and bytes transferred and the first byte, last byte, information along those lines for the service that, that was launched. So I'll stop the demo here. Um, there is a second part of the demo which illustrates the same workflow, but in this case it's the bronze tenant who's using the service, and uh, he would be allocated a a VPX instance running on standard hypervisor. So it's a multi-tenant deployment environment, which is typical uh, in a cloud environment, basically. And it's, it, it supports different classes of services. Um, today, what we showed is a basic load balancing service, but we're also, um, we, we also support SSL termination as an advanced load balancing function, and we're aggressively working towards a roadmap for um, advanced features such as layer seven inspection capabilities and content switching and advanced ADC functions, including compression and caching. So that's the, that's the demo, and uh, I'll open it up for questions. Good question. Go ahead. Um, the, the basic load balancing function is actually available in Control Center. It's also available in OpenStack. So we go, what we just demonstrated, the load balancing as a service functions, is actually exposed through the OpenStack LBAS APIs within the Neutron project. What other questions do you have? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And we can we we hook up the net scalers in an indirect fashion. It's actually orchestrated through the NetScaler control center, and we. We, we support all different platforms of NetScaler today from day one, which includes SDX, VPX, and MPX. Actually, it's both, because the first thing we did was to actually build a VM so that there's a VM that can run, that can run, it's a NetScaler VM that can run on all different kinds of hypervisors, including Zen, uh, like I said, all, all the hypervisors, right? KVM. Yeah, KVM2. Um, and then, now we also have purpose-built multi-tenant platform that can actually run different VM instances of NetScaler and can host them um, in, a, in an appliance. Other questions? 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to move on to the last one, which is Cloud Portal Business Manager. So what exactly is this? So what we're seeing a lot from our customers is this concept of, first of all, two kinds of, of customers. Your, your users that want to get services, and then going back to that very first slide that I was talking about, that evolving role of IT, the actual cloud administrators. Now, what we want to be able to do is offer multiple services and multiple workloads through a centralized interface to the organization and really honestly front end multiple cloud services on the backside. So, so really doing things like self-service, discovery, billing, chargeback, showback kind of features and really taking your, your services, packaging them up and, and in a multi-tenant environment really showing the ones that you need to each tenant as needed. And then on the back end, um, really could be public cloud, could be private cloud, could be a, a third party, you know, PaaS kind of configuration. We're doing a little bit of everything and anything and really offering many different services when it comes to Cloud Portal Business Manager. And what we've done here, and again, you notice on the first slide, uh, I mentioned this is a tech preview. So this is available today. You can download it today. Um, but what we're doing is we're, we're connecting to OpenStack. And so we build connectors on the back end to all of the different cloud services. And we have a Cloud Portal, or CPBM as we're shortening it down here, connector for OpenStack. The one we're, we're looking at here, again, being tech preview, we, we say experimental reference connector. Now, what does that mean? Experimental means we're still working on it. We don't support it in production just yet. Reference meaning it being open source. And so what we're looking to do here is, is what will this do and what advantages do you get when we actually plug into OpenStack? Well, we get this self-service account and user creation and provisioning, and it's kind of hard to see up here, I apologize, but what we're actually able to do is create users from within Cloud Portal that will populate within OpenStack. We're able to offer service catalogs, so we're able to bundle services together. And then we're able to take those, and everything in Cloud Portal is really done with what we call subscriptions. So you're offering subscriptions to your users. They, they can subscribe to virtual machines, they can subscribe to volume, so storage as a service kind of configuration, and you can present them, and then um, really kind of do some billing, charging, showing back kind of things, depending on your organization if you want to do that. And then also, we're integrating a single sign-on feature into uh, OpenStack, so we can directly interface the Horizon UI from within Cloud Portal as well. And this is where, if you're familiar with the OpenStack projects and what each of them do, ciliometer is actually that collecting of matrix, uh, metrics. We're able to do that here. And we actually collect on a good number of them. We're on the virtual machine, volume, image storage, network. We're able to really take all of those and give you a consolidated view, not just with OpenStack, but across other platforms that you're using or other services that you're using as well to give you a consolidated dashboard view of how much your consumers are actually using in a given time frame. Um, coming up next, because again, this is a tech preview, we want to do support for heat. We want to do full Keystone integration and um, obviously upgrade it for Havana. Right now it is still Grizzly based. And what I want to do here is flip over to a quick demo of this. Um, this one is pretty short and I hope you'll be able to see it. I, let me just fix this here real quick. Let me try it that way. Unfortunately, this, this video gave me fits earlier, so I'm hoping that it will play. Unfortunately, it is not playing. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to skip past this one because actually I'm short on time anyway. What I'd like to do though is, is tell you this full demo is actually running in our booth as well. So come by and take a look. But at the end of the day, what we're looking to do is not just solely talk to OpenStack, but talk to multiple cloud services 
and really consolidate that viewpoint down. So why would we do something like that again? What's the value here? We're reducing the IT operations. And we're providing almost like an app store-like user interface. And an enhanced user experience with single sign-on. And better visibility. This is really the key right now. Better visibility into not just what you're doing with OpenStack, but maybe what you're doing with AWS, what you're doing with OpenStack, what you're doing with CloudStack, what you're doing with Citrix Cloud Platform, um, as well as many other vendors that are in the Cloud Platform ecosystem as well. So um, if you're familiar with like Platform as a, as a Service, there's Active State in there. Um, there's a lot of other applications that we can actually plug in and monitor from this interface. And with that, I've got a quick summary slide after this, but what questions do you have about any of that that I just said? Or any questions about Zen Server or any of the others? Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. Is that out of the box? I think it is, but <laughs> good. So again, one of the key messages there is control center. So NetScaler control center really being that central access point for, for everything NetScaler and again, aggregating all your services. Uh, very similar to what we're trying to do with, with Cloud Portal as well. And so let's do a quick summary. Um, so again, the way we see it is that evolving role of IT from just straight up operations to really operations and brokering as well. And we talked about Zen Server, Zen Server Core, and, and how that will plug into Nova, as well as all of the other projects. We talked about NetScaler's load balancing as a service and the integrations with Neutron and Control Center integrations. And lastly, the Cloud Portal, the service consolidation, and, and how we're able to really uh, front end multiple cloud services with that product and, and consolidate all of your usage within an organization or a multi-tenant environment down. And with that, we'll take some questions. We'll be around for a while. I will um, upload these slides to the OpenStack Foundation uh, site later today. They will be available tomorrow for you to download. And then as well, come by our booth. We've got many different uh, demos running in our booth. We've, we've actually got the, the Zen Server Core demonstration running. We're actually running another one with Intel as well. Um, called Mystery Hill, and you'll, ha you'll have to talk a, a little bit more about that and, and ask them about that. The NetScaler demos are running as well, and then, of course, I apologize, they, it didn't like the resolution of this video screen for some reason, but the Cloud Portal uh, demonstration as well. And with that, I'll say thank you for your time, and uh, enjoy lunch.